hi everyone welcome to my channel yes i have my mic here i'm in a slightly different location because i'm actually in tobago um so yeah on a mini vacation before i head back out to work and today i'm going to be discussing the types of fractures and their classifications this is based on my blog post on the same topic and yeah hopefully the background noise isn't too crazy some guy decided to power wash or whatever right as i started filming like right before i press record so i can't really do anything about that so let me pull up the document well let me pull up my notes because again it's based on the same blog post so if you wish and you would also want to have this in written form or you want to be able to see the words and you're somebody that learns more so from reading and stuff then you could be sure to actually check out the blog on this topic i'm in need of an x-ray so i'm just gonna scoot back over to this side a bit because I would have my images popping up there right so in radiography we see fractures all the time it's one of the most common pathologies i think we would ever see radiography not only obviously deals with looking at bone but we look at organs as well like we had the lungs the large intestines um, different glands whatever the case is right so we look at the body as a whole now in this particular video, of course, we're focusing on bone. So we're looking at fractures and what is a fracture? A fracture is a discontinuity or a break within a bone. So where there is bone and, and a demarcation or an area where the bone ceases to continue, that's where you know we see that, okay, there's a fracture. Now there are four types of fractures that we could have, not getting into so much the classifications in terms of the names of the different types, but generally a fracture can be open, closed, it can be displaced or non-displaced. With an open fracture, as the name suggests, something is open, right? So the bone actually breaks and opens the skin. So now we may be able to see, well not may, we would likely be able to see the bone sticking out of the skin. So that's where we have the open fracture. With a closed fracture, we know that it is broken, we can see that it is broken, but the bone has not pierced the soft tissue, so we can't see the bone projecting through the outermost layer of the skin. When it comes to a non-displaced fracture, it means that though the, bro though the bone sorry, is broken, the pieces aren't separated or, or disjointed from each other. So you don't have one piece here and the other piece sticking out here, right? The bone is broken, but it's still in line with the way it's supposed to be, apart from the fact that it is now separated, right? And then we have the displaced fracture where we have the bone being separated it broke on obviously but it's not in line with each other anymore it broke and it's off to one side it could be both pieces off to one side or just one piece or several pieces off to another side where we can't see it lining up the way it normally would so that would be a displaced fracture as the name suggests it is not in its original placement and with this image that you see in here this lateral lumbar spine it's a left lateral lumbar spine we see that this is a compression fracture a compression fracture as the name suggests like this can happen through an accident or something where the bones kind of compact and press on each other that causes the bone to smush and therefore break or tear if you want to look at it that way so you may not see distinct pieces but the bone doesn't hold its original form therefore it is weakened because it's broken right so that's what a compression fracture looks like the pieces are wedged together or crushed together and this particular l spine image based on the patient's history occurred after a fall so you really need to be careful right and this this type of fracture usually happens with older folks it can happen with people in their i don't know mid 40s or between 40s and 50s but you would more see this in older people or people like 50 and up you know i'm zooming into this fracture a bit just to make sure right this next fracture we see in here is actually an open fracture of the distal and middle phalanx um yeah the middle as well of the middle finger 
This particular fracture is called an open fracture, though we may not necessarily be able to tell in the AP, of course, if we see in the patient's hand, we will know if the fracture is open, right? Though we may not be able to tell in the AP, I could clearly see that the bone is projecting out as soft tissue. So if you zoom in, and of course you will look at a different view, like an oblique of the hand, you would see that the fracture is indeed open, right? So the bone is projecting through the skin. This is also considered or called a compound fracture. My next fracture is actually a fracture of the distal right or the right distal fibula. This particular fracture is called a simple fracture. We see that it is not displaced. The bone is still in line, but we can see that dark, lucent line that signifies that there is a discontinuation in the bone. Our next fracture is common in pediatric patients. It's called a green stick fracture. And this is what it looks like. In this case, the fracture is of both the radius and the ulna. This usually happens when the patients fall, hit their hand, remember, or their feet or wherever. Remember, children's bones are softer and they are more malleable. So if they do get a lash, like a really hard lash, this could even be as a form of abuse. Like you really need to check the patient's history and make sure the things add up. Or otherwise, they need to report it because patients, parents, and family members do lie. Oh my gosh, there's a bird right there. I wish I could show you guys. Please move. Oh, I don't afraid birds, but this is weird. Let me see if I can show you guys. It might move. Oh no, it moved. The bird left. Okay, I got distracted and the bird left nevertheless. So, yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, this particular fracture is a uh, a common fracture in pediatric patients but you really must vet the history and make sure that the history adds up otherwise it could be a sign of abuse but this is a common type of fracture that you'll see in pediatric patients usually coming about as I'm due to like trauma whatever that trauma may be and yeah in this case is a fracture of both the radius and the ulna the next fracture is a transverse fracture and it is of the Mid, you could say, femoral shaft of the right femur, but this particular x-ray is a knee up x-ray. And a transverse fracture is a horizontal or a break that is sideways. It's pretty much a clean cut fracture and we can see in this particular image that the fracture is non-displaced because the bone still lines up together, which should mean when they do the, uh, the surgery, the ORIF or the open reduction internal fixation of the bone, it will be simple because they don't have to worry about putting traction or pulling on the leg to make sure that the bone finally lines back up in place so that they could put in the, um, the the metal, the fixtures, right? This next one is a spiral or oblique fracture and we could clearly see that the fracture moves in a circle, almost like a coil, right? It spirals, it twists and turns around the bone. This is a spiral fracture of the distal end of the left tibia. Our next fracture is a tough one to work with and if you haven't been in the operating theater already, you will soon come to, to learn how annoying this particular fracture is. Comminuted fractures broken up into several pieces. This particular one is of the humerus due to a gunshot wound. And if you look at the pellets, it's actually pellets, not typical bullets, right? So maybe the person was hunting or maybe they just got shot with a pellet gun. I don't know. But it's where the bone is broken up into several, several pieces. It is the worst and most annoying fracture to have to mend or to have to be there for when you're in theater because this type of case, this type of surgery for correction goes on for hours, hours and hours. It takes forever. It's definitely longer than a simple transverse fracture or a spiral fracture or even a, a, dis a simply displaced fracture. This one definitely way more complicated and I'm sure it hurts like hell this one you can see if you look closely that the arm it looks as though it's definitely an open fracture as well apart from it being comminuted right so yeah this is an open comminuted fracture next fracture is kind of similar to the the first fracture we looked at similar to the compression fra fracture however this one is simply called the impacted fracture Again, it has to do with wedging. We more call it an impacted fracture. So if it's like the hip, so like weight drop on it so suddenly that it broke 
the femoral neck, the left femoral neck of this hip. Sometimes it e it's easy to kind of pass up this fracture. So if you know you have a patient that came in with a history of a fall, they require to see the hip. Take a close look at the femoral neck because chances are it may very well be broken. And when you're just doing the extra quick and passing, us radiographers might not necessarily see it right away. But you would know when your patient comes back. Or you'll know when you see that patient in the theater that you have to do the CM case for, you know. So yeah, these are fractures, especially when it comes to the hip, which is where it's most common, you would need to, um, to look out for. And the last fracture is what? What do I have here? Okay, this particular fracture is just an example, right, of, of some of the types of fractures we looked at before. It is a fracture of a forearm, right? We see that in this radiograph, we see an oblique fracture or a spiral fracture of the ulna, and the ulna also happens to be displaced. This is a pediatric case, right? So you'll see that the radius as well is also displaced. It may not be broken from what we could see, but it definitely does not line up in its normal area when it comes to where the joint is. However, the radius is not fractured, at least from what we could see in this one view. So that's it for this video. I hope that this was helpful going through all the types of common fractures in radiography. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.